While the latest report on U.S. consumer confidence suggests it could be a while before the U.S. raises interest rates, that's not the case in Australia. Let's listen. The Australian economy, meanwhile, has been resilient, with economic activity looking stronger than expected a few months ago. Both foreign and local factors have been at work. Exports have been remarkably strong. That was Reserve Bank of Australia Governor Glenn Stevens saying that his country will have to raise rates as the economy improves. Let's find out. Will it happen? What will it mean? And how can you profit? We have Michael Wolfolk. He is the senior currency strategist at Bank of New York Mellon and Australia. The Aussie dollar top of the agenda, Michael, right? It certainly is. It looks like the Aussie has a, a ways to rally here once we get through with uh, this position adjustment in the marketplace. What has been going on, though? Because I was under the impression everyone was saying, oh, yeah, commodity economies, whether it's the loony or whether it's the Aussie dollar, you want to be owning these. But Recently, there's been a pullback. What happened? Well, certainly you want to be long commodity currencies uh, when commodity prices are headed higher, as they have been over the last several months during the green shoots and uh, earnings season uh, rally. Uh, you also want to be long uh, high-yield currencies that have uh, higher interest rates than, than others, and certainly the, the Aussie dollar is, is one of them. Uh, but also the Australian dollar uh, has uh, represented also another trade, which is basically the move uh, out of uh, uh, safe haven currencies, such as the, the dollar and, and, the, and the yen to some extent, and into riskier uh, high-yield uh, strategies. Uh, so uh, it's really a barometer in foreign exchange right now watching this uh, Aussie yen rate, which has collapsed over this week. I think that uh, you know, once we have this... Uh, capitulation uh, run its course. Uh, perhaps it extends into uh, next week uh, uh, for a session or two. I, I fully expect it to be uh, coming back. Uh, quite well, in, in one of your recent notes, you talk about volatility has gone up, volume has gone down. Volume and volatility of what, and what does that mean for investors? Well, we always talk about the summer doldrums of right. so July and August. Uh, you have a lot of professionals going on uh, holiday, both uh, here and in Europe and Asia. Uh, and uh, it is a period of market decline in volume. Illiquid market conditions prevail. Uh, small uh, 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 movements of uh, money sometimes can have uh, kind of exacerbated uh, uh, impact uh, in financial prices. Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, the 15 years I've been in financial markets, I don't remember a single August where we've had uh, the summer doldrums correspond with, uh, you know, a kind of a lackluster uh, type of uh, mentality and, and uh, an absence of, of, uh, of, of volatility and, and, uh, and price action. In so, fact, you know, little, little price swings get magnified because there's just not that many market participants. Pre precisely. And, and, and there's always something to trade off of. I mean, and, and typically we have some of the, the, the larger events happen. Uh, going back to 1997, that was the beginning of the uh, Southeast Asian crisis with uh, the Thai bot and the Malaysian and ring it uh, devaluing. And you, uh, Don't say it. We haven't had the crisis yet so far this summer. We've got a couple more weeks to go. What about yes. the trade that's been going on right now in the euro? I mean, we've yes. been hearing from uh, Jean-Claude Trichet, ECB. We got the numbers out today, France and Germany, saying they've out, come out of the recession. Right. Uh, what do we see? Continued strength in, in the euro. Who wins, who loses as a result of that? We had a lot of data out this week, uh, Pim, and one of the big surprises was not just on the U.S. side of the Atlantic, but it it was also on the European side. I mean, German and French GDP in the second quarter surprised on the upside. In fact, it looked a, a bit better than here in the U.S. I don't think that many people were expecting that. And uh, consequently, that, in addition to the fact that the ECB is more hawkish now than the Fed, they're expected to raise interest rates sooner than the Fed. Both uh, the growth fundamentals, the growth differentials, as well as the interest rate differentials favor uh, euro strength uh, over the dollar uh, in, in the near term. Once that mentality changes somewhat, I think the dollar has room to, to strengthen. What about, let's say, uh, sterling, uh, the U.K. currency? I mean, do we see a sell-off there because the euro starts to get even stronger? I mean, does the, does the, uh, does the pound suffer? I think the pound has to suffer right now, uh, at least uh, for the time being. Uh, the Bank of England surprised on the other side. They, ex they surprised by expanding their quantitative easing, one, taking one step back from eventually normalizing interest rates, eventually removing uh, accommodation. So uh, they're, they're not done yet 
uh, injecting uh, accommodation liquidity into the system there in the UK, and consequently, they had to be back of the bus in terms of the uh, order of central banks to raise interest rates. Uh, and you know, certainly, the Australian, uh, the, the Royal, Royal Bank of Australia, uh, is at the front of the line right now. All right. So, uh, Michael Wolfock, uh, thank you very much. You're calling for a continue, uh, well, a reversal, a strength in the Aussie dollar. Watch out for that to come. That's right. And a continued strength in the uh, in the euro. Appreciate your coming in, senior currency strategist, Bank of New York Mellon, Michael Wolfock. Thank you very much.